It's Friday, October 1st, 2010, and you are watching This Week in Linux News. This has been a banner week for Linux news. Lots and lots of big things have happened, so let's go ahead and get started. In an unprecedented, somewhat unexpected move, OpenOffice has been forked. A new foundation called the Document Foundation was created by some leading members of the OpenOffice.org community, and now they've forked OpenOffice.org to create a new project, LibreOffice. Basically, after Oracle bought Sun, there was not much work being done on the OpenOffice.org project. No real new features were added, just some little updates, nothing major. And these people have decided they really want to push OpenOffice and now LibreOffice forward and make it a bigger, better project. Now let's talk a little bit about some distro releases, because this was another big week for releases. Ubuntu 10.10's release candidate came out this week. If you haven't seen it already, I put out a video yesterday on the new features that are included in this release candidate. In addition, the Fedora project released Fedora 14 beta this week, but the grand majority of new features are not geared toward desktop users. One of the most touted features of this new version of Fedora is the Spice framework, which provides a virtual desktop infrastructure, and the grand majority of the rest of it has to do with programming and backend server type stuff that the end user may never even see. The leaders of the Fedora project have said this is actually gearing up toward Fedora 15, so they're going to have a lot more, a lot newer things for 15. 14 is just kind of a maintenance release to put out some of these new features, but not actually finalize anything. In addition, Sabion Linux shipped their 5.4 GNOME and KDE releases this week. This includes over a thousand updated packages, a newer kernel version 2.6.35. It also includes ButterFS support, a newer version of GNOME, and 3D support for Compiz and other things like that out of the box. In addition, their site says you can try it out within Windows. Just pop the DVD in the drive and it will open QEMU and let you virtualize it. And finally this week, Chakra GNU Linux version 0.2.2 released. This looks to mainly be a bug fixing release, but it says that NVIDIA and ATI drivers got a much needed update and are working much better now. Speaking of updating, I've mentioned before the game Amnesia from Frictional Games. Well, they've come out with patch 1.0.1 for it. This fixes a bunch of bugs, including some dealing with the ATI X1000 graphics card, and a bunch of other fixes like some texturing issues and, I don't know, walking into the corner and falling through the world and things like that. So if you do have a copy of Amnesia, make sure to go ahead and update it and check it out. Moving right along to a little bit of Ubuntu-related news, Canonical has announced the Ubuntu One Music Streaming Service. This is not the music store that came in version 10.04, this is actually a streaming service wrapped around that. So basically all the music you buy within Rhythmbox from the Ubuntu One Music Store is synchronized across your Ubuntu One cloud system thing that you can download it to your Android phone currently. Now the Android app is still in an early beta and they are planning to move it out to the iPhone eventually, so this does look like it could be kind of interesting for people with these mobile devices. I'll tell you right now, buying music on one system then paying to get it somewhere else, not a fan of that, so if I can pay for it one place, DRM free, and have it propagate to all of my devices, that's pretty sweet. And now we get to the truly juicy and awesome stories of the week. Just today, October 1st, Sintel, the latest project from Blender's Open Movie Project, was released online. I had a chance to watch it earlier in beautiful high definition, and I must say I was really, really impressed. There are a couple of storyline holes in it, but it's definitely worth a look. Download it for yourself, check it out on YouTube if you want to. I will, of course, have links to all that in the doobly-doo. And if you're not familiar with the Open Movie Project, Blender has actually been putting out these sorts of movies for several years now. Such films as Elephant's Dream and Big Buck Bunny have already been published. They're between five, seven minutes, something like that, and they are beautiful, excellent 3D animated series. In addition, they also put out a sandbox style game called Yo Frankie, where you play as Frankie the Flying Squirrel and you go around throwing sheep into lava pits. Pretty awesome, if I do say so. And to finish off this awesome week, let's talk about some mobile news. Mego has been ported to additional smartphones like the Nexus One and the Dell Streak. The Mego community wiki has been updated with some information on how to get Mego on these devices, and there are actually some images of Mego running on these devices. Very, very cool. And finally, for those of you who are Linux fans but own the iPad, do you want to run Linux on that iPad? You might be able to soon. Starnet Communications has created an app for the iPad called iLive X. It's going to be $14.99, and it allows you to run apps from your remote Linux and Unix servers over SSH using remote X11 connections. This can even be done over a 3G connection, and since you're running native Linux apps inside of it, you can even run Flash on the iPad through your X11 session through SSH. 
it's a really complicated little thing, but it is extraordinarily cool if you can get that running. I will, of course, have links to all of these items in the show notes, which can be found in the doobly-doo. Well, that's all I've got for you this week. If you haven't already, check out my website, thisweekinlinux.com. I've got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash thisweekinlinux. Twitter page, twitter.com slash thisweekinlinux. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.